Research Methods, Fall 2017, with Dr. Audubon Adea. My discourse, every death matters. In the same way every life matters, so does every death. Death is significant because it memorializes and reflects on the significance of life. Over 107 billion people have lived on the earth. The number is increasing with the death every 12 seconds and a birth every eight. If you live, you must die. Cremations and casket burials have been traditional for thousands of years. Plots take up space and are identified for that use only. With cremations, calabariums, which house vessels of the deceased, take up space and, and are identified for that use only. In New York City, more than 1,500 indigent or unclaimed bodies are removed and buried in a place like Hart Island each year. Hart Island is a strip of land off the coast of the Bronx, where more than a million men, women, and children have been buried since 1869. These kinds of places are known as potter's fields, and there are three other potter fields located in New York City. In Detroit, during the 2010 calendar year, the Department of Health Services reports state emergency relief payments were made to help 7,099 indigent burials. Of that number, 125 were unclaimed bodies. My discourse focuses on the unclaimed bodies. The first step is identification. The installation of a temporary memorial is intended to identify the deceased. This will be a simple plaque placed in an area where the deceased was last seen. Utilizing social services provided by the state and philanthropists, such as soup kitchens, a meal will be served in, the, in honor of the recently lost. This reception is a step in the memorial process. Local churches will be asked to include the deceased community member during the service. Currently, state funding is provided for unclaimed bodies. These funds will be allocated toward this process. To preserve space, the bodies will be cremated and a memorial plaque will be provided as a permanent installation inside one of the supporting reflection buildings. Reflection areas are located in raised garden beds on the exterior of the building, while memorial plaques are placed on the interior of the building. Integrating preservation of a building while preserving the memory of the deceased will allow the building to be maintained in the memory of the people in the community. It is in this way the living can still appreciate the contributions of every member of the community. The cremains will be buried 12 inches below grade in a garden setting on the exterior of a restored building. They will be raised planting beds large enough to hold several hundred remains per year. The opportunity to reuse the burial site over and over makes this option sustainable. At the end of the plant's life cycle, another plant can replace it at a minimal cost. Every person has given to the community. Every building has contributed to the city. Without either of these, there is no society. The restoration, remodel, or renovation is essential to the memorial process. These locations will become the primary reflection and resting place for the poor and broken members of the community. The building will be restored and repurposed for mixed use. The benefits to the community include bringing circulation back into the area and increased neighborhood values, increased jobs for the community during and beyond construction. It will preserve the city's history as well as provide a peaceful reflection area for all the community to appreciate. Surgeon Jovanovic Weiss with Normal Architecture Office influenced my research and method approach. His interpretive work recognized the social undecidedness and complexity of the diverse population with the urban fog of Belgrade research project.